Hi, good morning to everyone. Welcome to Desktop Central Training Program. So today's training is about patch management. I would like to thank everyone for joining the webinar in your busy schedule. Before we proceed further, it would be great if you could comment in the chat section to know if you are able to view my presentation and also hear my voice. Let's wait till we get a confirmation from few folks. Thank you all for your confirmation. Let me introduce myself. My name is Sriram, and I'm associated with Desktop Central for past 10 years. As you are aware, we are going to see how patch management works in Desktop Central. So now, let's have a look at the overview of our training schedule. It's a seven-week series, and we are in week one. We have already completed the first schedule, which is 6.30 GMT, and now we are in 11.30 AM Eastern Standard Time. The session will be recorded and it will be available in the below mentioned website, which is www.desktopcentral.com slash training.html. All the registered participants will receive the recorded training video via an email as well. Before we start the training, I would like to share with you the agenda for today. So let's see what is patch management and how it works in the overview, followed by the architecture. From my support experience, I will be sharing four scenarios which would comprehensively cover the entire patch automation process and its components. And we'll also see how to test and deploy the patches to the test and production environment. Deploying patches manually to multiple sites every month will be a tedious job for an administrator. Let's see how to overcome this situation using automate patch deployment. There might be some difficult situations where you need to install the critical patches immediately to the production environment. For an example, zero day critical patches. We will see how to achieve this using the critical vulnerability deployment technique. For better understanding, let me share with you some of the interesting scenarios which I came across while interacting with the customers. Conclusion of the session with most frequently asked questions with answers. And during the training session, if you come across any questions, feel free to use the chat option to chat with our expert team. We will also collect all the questions raised during the session and they will also be published for the larger audience view. So let's see the supported application in Desktop Central. Desktop Central supports patches for all three flavors of operating system, Windows, Mac, and Linux. And Windows, we support all operating system starting from Windows XP till Windows 10. When it comes to Linux, since it has many flavors of operating system, we support Ubuntu and Debian by now. And within third week of April, we will be extending our support for CentOS and Red Hat Linux. And we offer support for 950 plus application in Desktop Central. And moreover, when it comes to the third part dates, we support around 250 plus application, which is a huge list. So let's move on to the Desktop Central architecture. So first, we're gonna see the server installation part. Desktop Central is an on-premise solution where Desktop Central server can be installed in your local network or DMZ. The console can be accessed anywhere using the host name or the IP address followed by the port details. I presume everybody knows about DMZ. It is where you can place your server in a secured hosting so that the client machine can reach the server in a secure way. Let's see how to install the agents in the client machine. When it comes to the agent installation, agents should be installed in order to manage the client machines. In Desktop Central, we can manage desktop, laptop, server, and surfaces. Agent installation can be done through multiple ways. Windows GPO or startup script. If you are using Active Directory in Windows Network, you should be able to leverage that by deploying agents using group policy. Or from the console, 
it can just push the agent silently to the client machines or it can also use the manual deployment option you can download and install the agent manually so now we'll see how to manage multiple remote sites in desktop central you can also manage machines in both LAN and WAN network using a distribution server. So you might wonder what is a distribution server. For an example, if you have concerns with bandwidth and if you manage more than 20 machines in a remote site, here is where the distribution server comes into picture. So when a patch or a software task is created, the machines which are located in the remote office will not reach the server to download the patches. Only the distribution server will reach the desktop central server to download the patches. Only the DS server will go ahead and reach the desktop central server, it downloads the patches, and it distributes to the machines which are available in the remote office. So this feature will help you to manage the bandwidth efficiently. Roaming users who move from one location to another can be managed with Desktop Central. To achieve this, if you are managing Desktop Central server in LAN or in DMC, you can enable a NASing in your firewall, or you can utilize the forwarding server, which will help to communicate the agent securely. What is a forwarding server? If you wish to manage the roaming user securely, then you can utilize the forwarding server feature. So this acts as a secured gateway between the roaming agents and then the desktop central server. Any communication from roaming agents to desktop central server will be routed through the forwarding server. So let's move on to the next topic, which is AWS and Azure. There might be multiple scenarios why you wish to install the server in cloud. Example, if you manage more roaming users, having the server in cloud will be an advantage. So in this scenario, you can place the desktop central server in AWS or Azure. Cost-effective solution. So if you're placing the device in cloud, you can avoid the hardware infrastructure and maintenance cost for infrastructure. And if you're an MSP, then you can manage multiple machines using cloud. And also, if you have a distribution server for cloud in your network, which will contact the AWS or Azure instance, and your client can be managed effectively. You can also manage roaming users via your distribution server. If you host your application servers on cloud, they can be managed directly from Azure or AWS network. And I would like to give you one more exciting information that Desktop Central will be on cloud very soon. So where it can comprehensively manage all of these above mentioned feature effectively. By now, we have released our cloud version for another managed engine product, which is Batch Manager Plus. So if you guys have any questions related to what we have completed, please use the chat option to chat with our expert team. So let's move on to the components. So here, we're gonna see what are all the components involved in Desktop Central. So here you can find seven components out of seven, four components are optional. Based on your requirement and licensing, you can manage these components and you'll find three essential components. By now, you should be like more clear about how it works with the notification server and the distribution server. I would also like to give you more information on notification server, distribution server, and forwarding server in the coming slides. So here, I would like to tell you the details about the ports which are managed by Desktop Central. We would recommend you to open the port shown here in order to manage specific features with Desktop Central. Agent server communication happens in port 8020 and server to agent communication, like notification happens in port 8027 TCP. For an example, voice and video chat, one of the features associated with the product works in UDP 8443. If it is a Windows firewall, which is blocking the ports, we will notify you in the home screen and that can be added as an exception. 
when it comes to the agent and server communication, it happens securely on port 8383. What happens if this port is blocked on the server machine? Any patch or software deployment task you push from the server will not get completed. To know more information about the port, please visit the below mentioned website, which is www.desktopcentral.com slash ports. And you might also wonder, in the previous slide, you'll see another important thing called as a failover server. What is a failover server? How it is going to help you out over here? So let me concise about the failover server here. Failover server brings in an additional server which actively monitors the primary server and takes over the operation when the primary server fails. This feature helps you eliminate the downtime in your business. By now, you should be aware of all the components involved in Desktop Central. So let's move on to our next important topic, which is 90 minutes refresh policy. Desktop Central architecture is scalable to manage different network and even larger networks up to 20,000 machines. This is possible because of the refresh policy we use. Let me explicit this in simple terms. Desktop Central agent would be contacting the server at every 90 minutes. This is called as a agent refresh cycle. This feature ensures that all computers and the network contact the server periodically. The reason why we provide more importance to the 90 minutes refresh policy is because we're gonna handle more situations related to this 90 minutes refresh policy in the coming slides. And two important factors are ensured when it comes to 90 minutes refresh policy. Network is not choked by the agent communication, meaning bandwidth is not disturbed due to the agent server communication and the performance of the server is not affected at any time. Also, Desktop Central Server has an intelligence to end your systematic streamlined communication from all agents at the regular intervals. Let me go with an example here. In a network of 90 computers for each minute, one computer will reach out the Desktop Central Server. And for 900 computers for a minute, 10 computers will reach the server. Whereas for a larger network like 9,000 machines, 100 machines will reach the desktop central server. Using this feature, agent can communicate to the server without any hesitation. So now let's move on to the patch management architecture. Let's see how the patches are handled when it comes to desktop central. When a patch is released, it will be available in the vendor site. Our patch crawler team repeatedly probes the internet to draw vulnerability patch information from the vendor site. Once the download is completed, the patches will be tested in our environment. So this testing involves whether the patches can be successfully installed or not, compatibility check, and the applicability of the patches will be tested during this process. And then it will be published to the central patch repository. Once the desktop central server gets these information, like the desktop central server subscribes to central patch repository to periodically download the vulnerability database. Once this process is done, the client machine should be scanned in order to identify the missing patches. After identifying the missing patches, desktop central server directly downloads the required patches from the vendor site. Let's move on to the objective here. To explain the patch management module in a better way, I've taken an objective, which is setting up patch management. So here are the enterprise level best practices for setting up the patch management. We can see how to scan the machine and test patches in non-production machines. Once the testing is done, let's see how to approve the tested patches. After approval, we can see how to deploy the patches to the production environment. To make the deployment easier, let's have a look on how to create automated patch deployment tasks, and we'll also see how to deploy those patches on a periodic basis. At last, we will have a look on creating reports. 
to explain the objective in a better manner, I've taken a scenario here. John and his team are managing over 1,000 computers in his network, which is spread across the globe, like London, Chicago, and then New York, where he managed multiple remote offices in different locations, and by now, his requirement is to test and deploy the patches which are released by last month to his entire network on a periodic basis. Once the deployment is done, John should share the report to Peter, who is his IT manager. So let's see how John and team achieve this objective using Desktop Central. For that, I'm going to take you to the console and I'm going to log in as John. Just give me a minute. I'm trying to get access to the console. Fine. Now it's logged in as John, the administrator. So the first step we're going to do here is we're going to configure the proxy settings. So under admin, patch settings, you'll find the proxy settings over here. You might wonder why you need to configure the proxy settings. The main reason for configuring the proxy server is because Desktop Central should contact the central patch repository in order to update the vulnerability database, as well as to download the patches from the vendor site, proxy should be enabled. So here, once you click on edit, you'll find multiple ways to configure the proxy. So if you want to enter the username and password and then you want to manage the proxy settings, you can go ahead and enter those details, or you can also go ahead and utilize the direct connection to internet. Also, kindly confirm that the patchdb.manageengine.com is open in order to download the vulnerability database. So once we are done with the proxy setting, now we're going to configure the patch database settings. So here under patch database settings, you can choose a specific type of patches which you wish to manage like operating system related patches or third party patches. All the computers will be scanned to identify the missing patches based on this selection. For an example, if you're managing WSUS and you wish to only install the third party patches through Desktop Central. In this case, you can only choose to install the patches related to third party patches. However, based on my support experience, most of the customers will use all the options to ensure that entire network is patched through Desktop Central and gain a single point of management. You'll also find the schedule patch database update over here. So what this feature is going to do, we have made the entire process automated, like to update the vulnerability database, your desktop central server should reach the central patch repository on a daily basis. So we have made this process automated, so where you can just enter the time by when on a daily basis, your server should reach the central patch repository. Based on this, your desktop central server will reach the patch repository and it will update the vulnerability database. We have also provided another option to do this process manually. So under patch management, you can just go ahead and click on update now. So using this, you can also update the database manually. So once we are done with the patch database settings, now we're going to look at the agent installation part. For that, we should click on admin, scope of management, and then computers. Before we install the agents to the client machine, we are going to add the credentials in order to identify the client machines. For that, I'm going to click on add computers and then add domain. So here you can enter your domain credentials. So you can find two network types. One is Active Directory and the other one is Workgroup. We manage both at the same time, like a mixed network. So once you have entered the credentials over here, you can click on Add Domain. So once the domain is added, 
you can go ahead and click on select computers and then you can choose the machine over here and those machines will be listed so to install the agent you are just going to click on install agent immediately and once you click on done the agents will be silently pushed to the client machine and this installation does not require a reboot what exactly happens when you push an agent to the client machine we remotely connect to the client machine and then we copy the installables and once it is done the client machine will remotely invoke the installation we have also provided the post deployment activity for the agent installation so once the agent is installed successfully on the client machine you can use this option to perform and patch scan automatically on the client machine you can also enable the wake on lan feature using this option so now let's step into our first objective which is scanning the machine and then identifying the missing patches for that i'm going to click on patch management so under patch management you'll find the scan systems option available so here under scan systems you can find the details of the machine which are managed in desktop central so what we're going to do here is we're going to scan only specific set of machines so for that i'm going to choose the machines here and i can click on scan system or if i wish to scan all the machines i can very well go ahead and click on scan all which will scan all the machines available in the desktop central what exactly happens when i click on scan system so by now when i click on scan system a new task will be created in the desktop central server and what exactly will happen is a notification server which we have seen earlier will trigger the client machine to reach the server to pick up the scan task once the client machine picks up the scan task it will execute it in the client machine and then it will post the scan data back to the desktop central server so the scan data will have information about the missing patches once server get these details it will post those information under all patches view so here under the missing patches tab you can find the details of the patches which are missing for the managed machine if you wish to take this as a report we have also provided you an option so you can just go here you can click on this and you can take that as a report and we do have like multiple tabs available here like install patches applicable patches so here you can find the details of the patches which are installed and under applicable patches you can find the patches which are required for the managed machines and you'll also find the patch view computer view and detail view it is nothing but if you wish to know a missing patches based on or the machine based you can just go ahead and click on the computer view so here it shares the details of the missing patches machine wise so once this process is done now we have scanned the machine and our next objective is to go ahead and test those patches and then deploy it to my pilot environment for that i'm going to take you to the test and approve feature so under patch management approval settings here is where we're going to test the patches why we should test the patches in simple terms imagine if you have a banking application installed in your production environment installing the patches to the production environment without testing might create issues like bsod or unexpectedly it can corrupt the banking application sometimes it can even reboot the machine so this will be a very big downtime for your business in order to overcome this and to secure the entire network you can utilize the test and approve feature so here i'm going to show you how to create a test group so i'm going to click on add group here so once i click on add group you can find the platform as i've told you earlier in the previous webinar that we're going to release the test and approve feature even for linux machines so we have got that feature for you and the next step is to choose the custom group so what is a custom group and how it works for that i'm going to take you to another page 
custom group is a unique feature in Desktop Central, which helps you to create a group for specific users and computers. This group will help you to define the specific group of machines or users at the time of any frequent patch deployment or other requirements in Desktop Central. So here you can go ahead and create the groups based on your requirement. So now let's get back to the previous page. So now we're going to choose the applications. So based on your requirement, you can choose the update which you wish to deploy on your test environment. So you can choose a critical update or a non-security update or a rollup, any specific versions or any specific updates you wish to manage, you can choose it over here. And the same thing applies even to the third-party application. So you can choose the updates based on your requirement. And you'll also find another option to choose the application. For an example, if you wish to deploy patches only to a specific application, then you can very well go ahead and choose it over here. But when it comes to the test and approve, we always suggest you to deploy all the patches required for that machine. The reason why we tell you this because in future, you might have a requirement to deploy a new set of updates to your production environment. By that time, due to time constraint, you will not have an option to deploy the patches or to test the patches. But to avoid unnecessary issues in the future, you can initially, in the test and approve itself, you can test the patches and then release it to the production environment. And next comes the deployment policy. So here, you can choose the deployment policy. So based on the deployment policy, the patches will be deployed to the test environment. We're going to talk more about the deployment policy in the coming slides. So moving on to the next option, which is notification settings. So here, under the notification settings, you can enter the details, like you can update the email address over here, like you can have multiple email addresses updated. So once the test and approve task is completed, once the patches are approved, you'll be sent an email stating the task status, what exactly happened on the task, those information will be shared to you. And you'll also find the approval mode for tested patches. So here, you can utilize this option to automatically approve the tested patches. We have also provided an option to manually test the patches, so you can use one based on your requirement. So now we have seen how to create a test group. Now let's go ahead and see the task status of which we have created earlier. Under approval settings, this is the task which I've created earlier. So I'm going to show you the status here. So under summary, you can find the details of the updates I've chosen and then the deployment policy and then the machine name, all these information will be updated here. Under patch view, you can find the details of the patches which are approved, like which are installed and which have been managed for that specific test group. And you can also find the patches, when the patches have been downloaded, whether they've been successfully downloaded or not, it have been installed or not, all these information can be taken from here. And if you need this as a report, you can also trigger the report from here. We also provide another tab which tells you the download failed. While downloading the patch from the vendor site, if we have any issues, we will update those information over here. So we also provide another option if you wish to make any changes to the task, you can make the changes over here, as well as if you want to delete this entire configuration, you can very well go ahead and delete the configuration too. So now, as per my objective, I have scanned all the machines, identified the missing patches, and I've shown you how to deploy the patches to my pilot group. So my next objective is to deploy patches to multiple remote sites using the automate patch deployment. Before I explain about the automate patch deployment, I'm going to share the details about the recent update in automate patch deployment. Also, I'm going to share the differences between the old automate patch deployment and the new automate patch deployment. Since I'm going to use the word automate patch deployment very frequently, I'm going to abbreviate it as APD. For that, I'm gonna take you back to the presentation. 
recent days, vulnerabilities became major threat in the world. Impact of ransomware like WannaCry is a huge because of the delay patching. As a patch management solution, we took responsibility and we have renovated the APD in a way to achieve 100% success rate with a fast patching and even the secured option. It might cause some problems in your existing patching workflow, but sure, it will work very much better if you adapt to it. Let's see the first one over here, which is the scanning part. In the old APD, you need to create two different windows, one for scheduler and the other for the deployment. Most of the customers found this to be more confusing while creating a task. To make this process much easier, we have removed the scheduler task window from APD. In the new APD, you don't have to worry about the scanning and the scheduler part. Once the patch DB is updated, in the next 90 minutes, all the machines will be scanned and the required patches will be downloaded by the server. So you can directly concentrate on the deployment policy. So let's move on to the next topic, which is deployment. In the existing APD, since patches will not be deployed immediately after it's being tested, as the deployment takes place during the schedule task. However, in the new APD, the patches can be installed by the next deployment window itself after the approval. Moving on to the downloads during the runtime. Imagine you have created a weekly deployment schedule and you're deploying a service pack to your client machine. After installing the service pack, the client machine might require a new set of patches. In this scenario, the old APD will deploy the patches only on the next deployment schedule, that is next week. Whereas in the new automated patch deployment, the agent will update the server to download the required patches and the patches will get installed within the next refresh cycle itself. History of patches. In the existing APD, you can only see the patch deployment status till the next schedule. In the new APD, you can see the deployment status for months. Usability. I would like to give you an example to explain this scenario. In old APD, if you have created a task to scan 50 machines, whereas 50 machines out of 50, only 30 machines are online. The scanning process takes place only for 30 machines by this time. The rest of the machines will not be scanned when they come online. Only during the next schedule, if the machines are online, the scanning process takes place. Whereas in the new APD, the machines will be scanned during the next refresh cycle itself, and the patches will be deployed to those client machines. I would also like to show you how the automated patch deployment architecture works. So here you can see there is no synchronization between the automated patch deployment and the patch scan. So once the patch DB sync is done, by the next 90 minutes, all the machines will be scanned and based on the automated patch deployment, patches will be downloaded and then it will be deployed to the client machine and the history details on the report details will be shared to the updated email address. To provide or let, to give you more information about automated patch deployment as well as, let's see how to create the automated patch deployment. For that, I'm gonna take you to the console. So I'm gonna click on patch management and then automate patch deployment. So here I can go ahead and click on automate task and I can click on windows. So this is the new automate patch deployment, which I was talking about. So here under Microsoft updates, you can choose the updates which you wish to manage, whether a critical or you wish to manage only feature packs or optional updates, you can choose those information over here. And under patch all application, you can also choose if you wish to deploy patches only to a specific application, you can choose those details over here. And the same thing applies even to the third party updates. Moreover, we support definition updates like antivirus definition update when it comes to desktop central. So here you can see the list of antivirus updates which are supported. And moreover, if you wish to deploy the patches after 
a release time. For an example, you might have a requirement where you want to deploy patches only after certain days. As per my objective, I want to deploy the patches which are released by last month. So I can go ahead and update it as 30 days over here. So patches which are released before 30 days will be deployed. Moving on to the next one, which is deployment policy. So here I can choose the deployment policy based on my requirement. And you will also find an option to suspend the task after. For an example, imagine you're creating a deployment for the weekend, and then you want the patch to get deployed for Saturday and Sunday, and you don't want this task to continue by Monday because that's going to create unnecessary issues to the client. So to avoid that, you can just put up this option and you can create a suspend task. So by that time, after Sunday, the task will be expired. And you can also go ahead and choose the target to which you wish to deploy the patches. As per my requirement, I'm going to choose New Arc site. And if I wish to deploy patches to any one specific machine in New York, I can also go ahead and choose those details over here. Based on that, the patches will be deployed. And next comes the configure notification setting. Using this option, I can get send the details, the reports of the task once it is completed, whether the patches have been installed successfully or not, what exactly happened to the failed patches, what is the error message. You can find all those details in the report in a very detailed manner. So now we have created the automate patch deployment task. Let's go ahead and check the status of the task which we have created. So here comes the status of the task which we have created. Under summary, you can find the details of the patch task, when the patch task was initiated, what is the deployment policy, and here you can find the deployment summary. So once I click on the patching completed option, it tells me to which specific machines the patches have been installed and what is the status and what patches, all those information can be identified here. And under the summary, you'll also find the patch missing details. So once you click on that, it takes you to another screen where it shows why the patches are missing. In this situation, you might wonder why the patches are not installed. If you see the last contact time, the machines does not reach the desktop central server. And that's the reason the patches are not installed in the client machine. So we'll also, we have also provided an option to go ahead and modify the task. If you have made any errors while creating a task, you can also utilize this option to change those information. It can also suspend the task if there is a requirement. And if you want to duplicate the same task without the tar target machine, you can also use this option to do that. So now, based on my objective, I have scanned all the machines, identified the missing patches, deployed those patches to the test group, and then I've also seen how to deploy the patches to the remote offices using automate patch deployment. Now, I'm gonna take you back to the console to show some more information about the APD. So here comes the APD insight. So you can find the scan and identify missing patches, which was there in the previous automated patch deployment where we have taken this option out. So once the patches are tested and then it is approved, automatically by the next window time, the patches can be managed and it can be deployed to the client machine. You might have this question, I'm going to manage like multiple remote sites, how this is going to work out for me? Agent and the server has the potential to go ahead and identify the required patches and then deploy it based on the refresh policy. Once a task is created, automatically by the next 90 minutes, all the client machine will go ahead and pick up the task and then deploy those patches to the client machine and then it will share the report back to the server. So using this process, you can manage the patches efficiently on the client machine. So now I'm going to take you back to the console in order to show you how the zero-day critical patches can be managed when it comes to desktop central. You may have heard of Meltdown and Spectre patches. 
the two new hardware bugs which are capable of exposing any sensitive data like passwords, photos, email, and even critical documents can be accessed and stolen. So before the machines are getting affected, John and his team are going to identify the meltdown and specter patches and they're gonna deploy it to the production environment. Instead of creating filters, we have now introduced our new feature, which is critical vulnerabilities. So whenever a critical update is released, those updates will be listed over here. For an example, it'll have like multiple critical updates which will be listed. If you wanna be more specific, like I wish to deploy only Meltdown and Spectre patches, I can very well go ahead and choose that over here. So those details will be listed. So to deploy this patches, it's a very simple process. You can just go ahead and click on this and you can install the patch to the client machine. So here it will automatically choose the required targets. So the only thing I need to do here is just click on deploy immediately. So where the patches will be pushed immediately to the client machine and it can be managed securely. So once we are done with this, my next objective, I would also like to show you how to manage or deploy the patches manually. It's gonna be the same option under missing patches. Just choose the patches which you wish to install just click on install patch. So it will automatically choose the required target machine. The only thing you need to do here is just choose the deployment policy. Based on this, the patches will be deployed to these client machines immediately. So you might wonder, what is this deploy and deploy immediately? If you're planning to manage like more than 50 machines in the manual deployment, like if you wish to deploy more than 50 machines in a manual deployment, then you can go with the deploy. If you're gonna manage less than 50 machines, I can go with the deploy immediately option. So now, let's see, we have created a task over here for the manual deployment, and we'll also see how to modify the task which we have created. So under configuration, my configuration, I can go ahead and check the status of the manual deployment which we have created. It tells you the status summary information over here, and if I wish to modify, I can very well go ahead and do that. And we've also provided an option over here to deploy the fail targets. For example, when you're deploying a patch to your client machine, there are a few scenarios where the deployment might fail. It could be because of the unknown error code, or it could be because of the office update error. I'll also tell you what is the office update error in the coming slides. And you can also go ahead and deploy only the failed target using this option. So as per my objective, I've completed almost everything where I've started with scanning machines and identifying the patches, deploying it to the pilot group, and then deploying it to the production environment using the automate patch deployment. And I've also shown you how to manage the critical vulnerability update and how you can deploy the patches manually. So now, I'm gonna take you back to the console in order to give you more information about the deployment policy. So my requirement over here is to deploy the patches between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Once my office hours have done, I need to deploy the patches on my non-office hours timing. And during that time, most of my users will turn off the machine so where I need to wake up those machines and then deploy the patches, and I need to reboot the machines except the servers. So let's see how to achieve this using the deployment policy. So under patch management, deployment policy, here I can go ahead and create my own deployment policy. So first you need to create a deployment policy here with a name, and then I can choose the deployment at when the patches should get deployed to the client machine. It's advisable to go with either of these, whichever happens earlier. So whenever either a system startup or refresh cycle, whichever comes earlier will take care of the deployment. And you'll also find the preferred weeks for deployment when the patches should get deployed to the client machine. Whether the first week or second week, you can choose those details over here, as well as the preferred days for the deployment. 
we are also working on bringing more options to the deployment policy. In the coming months, you'll be finding like more advanced options in the deployment policy. You'll also find the deployment window. Here is where you're gonna mention by when the patches should get deployed to the client machine. So this deployment window is going to decide when the patches should be deployed to the client machine. You can choose up the time. Based on my requirement, I want the patches to get deployed by 6 p.m. till 9 p.m. So I can mention those information over here. And then I'll also find another option, which is turn on, which is nothing but a wake on LAN feature. So when a machine is turned off during the deployment, automatically the stop central server will go ahead and turn on the machines and the patches will be deployed to the client machine. And it'll also find the notify users about deployment. Using this option, you can notify the users during the deployment time. You can create your own message here and then that can be updated, that can be shown while the deployment is going to happen. You can also provide an option to the users to skip the deployment. So if the user is busy doing some important task, you don't want to disturb them by deploying a patch, you can utilize this option to skip the deployment, which is also available. Like you can just use this option to allow the user to skip the deployment. And you'll also find the reboot policy, one of the important things. So what is a reboot policy? How this is going to help the customers? Most of the patches requires a reboot after the installation. So using this option, you can very well go ahead and reboot the machines automatically using Desktop Central. As per my objective, I need to exclude the servers from rebooting. So I've just chosen this option. You can also provide access to users to skip the deployment. Even that option is very well available for you. So after two days, I want the machines to force reboot. So once the deployment is done, after two days of time, if the user is not rebooting the machine, I can also go ahead and force reboot the machines. So this is the deployment policy and this is how it works. If you guys have any questions, please use the chat option to chat with our expert team. I'll also like to show you some more information about the users, like how they can skip the reboot. So this is how the users will get notification on their screen. Like you can choose either 15 minutes or one hour or two hours, or you can also click on restart now or restart later. And you'll also find this option. This is a force reboot message, which will be displayed on the client end. So where they'll find an option, they'll find a notification window, which will time out in five minutes based on the setting, which have done in the deployment policy. So we are done with the automate patch deployment as well as the other patching management. So let's move on to the scenarios and solutions. So the first scenario which we're gonna see here is to take advantage of enhancement, I want to migrate my existing APD task to the new approach. Yes, it is possible. Let me show you how this can be done. So under automate patch deployment, once you have moved to the 192 build. So we have released this feature from the 192 build. So once you have upgraded to the 192 build, on the under automate patch deployment, you'll find an update over here, like scheduler has been removed and you can migrate. So once you click on migrate, you'll find the details of the task which was created earlier and you can just click on migrate. So where it's a very simple step, and automatically all the existing tasks will be migrated to the new APD workflow. Moving on to the next scenario. What happens if I do not migrate the task to the new approach? Okay, in this situation, we have provided you a 90 days of time in order to migrate the existing APD to the new one. If you are not migrating within those 90 days, where the server will go ahead and delete the existing automate patch deployment task. Moving on to the scenario three, I completely rely on desktop central for patch management of both OS and third-party application. 
Is that a way to disable automatic updates of third-party applications like Adobe, Java, et cetera? Yes, it is possible. So under Patch Management, disable automatic update. So here, I can go ahead and create a configuration based on my requirement. If I wish to disable the Windows update, or if I wish to disable an Adobe automatic update, I can very well go ahead and create it as a configuration, and then I can push it to my client machines. I have some legacy application for our business that only run an older Java version. How can I disable the Java update? So there are two solutions for this issue. One is selective exclusion, which is while creating an automated patch deployment, I can very well go ahead and exclude that specific application. So I can go ahead and choose the Java updates or any specific updates which I wish to exclude, and then the patches will not get deployed for that specific application. And when it comes to the permanent exclusion, so under patch management, you'll also find another thing called as a big line patch. So here you can go ahead and create a separate task for declining a patch, and then you can decline that specific application. It can decline it based on the KB number or bulletin ID or even the family. Based on this, it can decline a specific patch. Scenario five, our business applications misbehave occasionally, and I suspect that a recent patch deployment could be the cause. What should I do? So in this situation, we have also provided you an option to uninstall the patches. Under patch management, all patches view, install patches, you can go ahead and choose the patch which you wish to uninstall, and you can click on uninstall patch. So this will remove the patch from the client machine. And I would also recommend, I would also like to provide one more inform information over here. If you have tested the patches in your test environment, you can avoid these set of issues in your production environment. So please do test the patches before deploying it to the production environment. I want to push antivirus definition updates to computers. Can this be done? Yes, it is possible. Under patch management, automate patch management, I can go ahead and choose the definition updates which I wish to manage. And it can be deployed to the client machine effectively. I do not want to deploy the new patches immediately to the entire network. I would like to automate the deployment in stages based on deployment. Yes, it is possible. So here, under patch management, automate patch deployment, I can go ahead and I can choose by when the patches should get deployed to my client machine. If I want to go with the release date, I want the patches to get deployed which are released by last month. In that situation, I can go ahead and choose this option. So if you want to go with the approval mode, so the patches which are released before 10 days, I want to deploy only those patches, I can go ahead and create a task for this. And for another set of machines, I can create another task for 20 days. So based on this, the patches can be deployed on a schedule to the client machine. While deploying the patches, I came across below errors on a multiple clients. How to get this fixed? Office update error. Office update error is nothing but when you have uninstalled an office application or if it is not uninstalled properly, by that situation when you're trying to do an update, you might experience this issue. So for these set of issues, we always recommend you to kindly share the screenshots as well as the agent logs to analyze this issue further. We have a lot of business critical servers running Linux and many users running Mac. How to ensure that these computers are servers are patched up to date? Yes, for this, first you need to go to the agent settings under scope of management. So here you need to ensure that you have chosen the group for Mac machines as well as Linux machines. Once this information is chosen, you can install, you can download the agent and you can install it in the Mac and Linux machine. And then you need to go to admin, patch database settings, which you have seen earlier. Here I can choose the Mac and Linux update. 
So based on this, even the Mac and Linux machines will be patched efficiently. So when it comes to Managed Engine, we support many products like Managed Engine Desktop Central, Desktop Central MSP, and Patch Manager Plus, a dedicated software for managing your patches. And we do have like Patch Connect Plus. If you wish to manage only third-party updates, then you can go for the Patch Connect Plus product. Moving on to the questions. What is the average turnaround for patches to be updated by Desktop Central? So whenever a patch is released by a vendor, within four hours of time, we'll be updating those information to the central patch repository. This is for the security updates. And when it comes to non-security updates, it will be supported maximum within 24 hours of time. In the new approach, if schedule scan is removed, will I be able to scan my machines at all? We have also provided you an option to scan the machines manually. As we have seen earlier, under patch management, I can go ahead and choose the machine which I wish to scan, and I can scan it manually. We have also provided this option for you. How much disk space does a distribution server need to have to catch patches? Okay, this again depends on the applications and operating system you manage in your environment. Imagine you have like different operating systems. You have like 50 machines managing under a remote office. And all the 50 machines are under different operating systems like Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 8. And this situation, definitely it will also have different applications for it. So in this situation, you'll need to have like more disk space in order to manage those machines. If you have common operating system in a remote office, then it's gonna have consume less space. How can I receive a patch updates based on the OS? For example, Windows 7 should get only patches applicable to Windows 7 and Windows 10 should receive only Windows 10 patches. When it comes to desktop central, our agent and client has an intelligence to download only the required patches for those machines. While doing a scan, agent will only update the patches required for those specific machines. And while downloading the patches also, agent will only download the patches required for those specific machines. I have configured patch cleanup policy to remove old patches. What will happen when a machine needs an older patch? How does it work? So under admin, you'll find the cleanup settings, which is available. So under cleanup settings, you can actually go ahead and use this option to remove superseded patches, or it can also remove the patches which are older than three months. If a patch is removed from the repository, then the patches need to be downloaded again by the server. I could see the difference in patches discovered by Desktop Central against WSUS, Windows updates, and why. So I could tell you uh, more information on this. When it comes to managing patches with Desktop Central, we support both Microsoft and third-party application. So in Desktop Central, you will see more number of missing patches where this feature is not available with WSUS. And moreover, with WSUS, there are other patches which are supported, like driver updates, which are supported in WSUS, and that is not supported in Desktop Central by now. So there could be some differences between the patches. Can I skip the reboot if a patch is installed in a machine that's not required? Yes, it is possible. So under patch management, deployment setting. Here, while creating a task, you can choose this option, skip reboot if the machine does not require a reboot. Using this option, if a machine, if a patch does not require a reboot, those machines will be skipped. How to force reboot or shut down after two days from the date of deployment? How does this option work? Okay, this is one of the crucial questions where most of the customers get confused. So here you'll find an option to postpone reboot and then you'll provide an option to the user to skip the reboot. So how this works, how does two days 
are calculated. So as we have shown you earlier, a notification will be shown on the screen in order to skip the deployment. So when the user is going to click on OK, two hours from now, the reboot should happen or skip it for two hours and then remind me. In that situation, when he click on OK, from that time, two days will be calculated. So we are end of the training program. It can also rate us on a scale of one to five. So where you'll be receiving an email once we are done with the training. So you can rate us on a scale of one to five where five is the best. It can also spread a word in Facebook or even in Twitter. You can update the details or if you need to improvise some information in the training program, you can also update those information over there. And the next training schedule is software deployment, which is going to happen on April 11th. And to join the seminar for endpoint security as well as for GDPR, you can use the below link to register. So please use the below link and you can register for the seminar. So based on this, whatever training we have completed, if you have more questions, if you want to know more information about the product, you can also let us know so where we can go ahead and create a personalized online demo for you. And you can just update our chat team now so where they will take your request and they can schedule the demo accordingly based on your requirement. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate your time and patience for joining the webinar. If you guys have any questions, please do let us know our chat team. Thank you so much for your time and patience. You guys have a wonderful day.